Hey, 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 I am super excited to be joining you today. I am delighted and honored to be asked back for year two of the Zen Made Summit. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to spend some time with me. If you have a pen and paper, I do recommend that you grab it. This is one of those times that I'm going to say, don't multitask and don't do other things. Because what I'm going to share with you today are the biggest mistakes that house cleaners have made in the house cleaning business. And if you can understand one or two or three or 10 of these, and you can avoid making these mistakes, this will revolutionize your business. All right. So the first one comes from a house cleaner who wrote into the show. And she said, the biggest mistake that I made was that I did not have my policies and procedures in place. Without your policies and procedures in place, you don't know how your business operates. And so every day when you get up, you're winging it, which is exhausting, right? You get up every day and you're like, oh, I have to go in and go to work. But without a routine and without knowing what your standard operating procedures are, every single day when something happens, you have to stop and you have to decide, well, how does my company do that? And so if a customer asks you, hey, can you clean out my fridge? If there's no standard operating procedure and you don't have any policies about calling the office for an upsell and there's going to be an extra charge and all that stuff, you have to stop in the moment and decide, well, am I going to have an extra half hour of time today to do that? So it's ideal if you have all of your operating procedures in place and you say, this is what we do. This is what we don't do. This is how we do this. This is how we do this. And it's all set in stone. And that way, when a customer says, can you do this? You say, nope, I can't do it for, for this reason. Or yes, we can do it, but here's the, the process we follow in order to make that happen. All right. The next biggest mistake made by house cleaners, allowing customers to book their cleaning every three weeks because the weeks go bi-weekly for most house cleaning companies. And so every other week at Thursday at 4 p.m., you can sell that time slot to a regular customer. So every other week, you're going to have the same customer. And on the every other week, you would have a different customer in the same time slot. But if you have a, a customer that's every three weeks, what happens is you can't book a weekly and you can't book a bi-weekly customer in that spot. So basically, you're holding an entire month calendar open for that one random client who wanted a random moving or roving clean. So what is the answer? You have somebody that doesn't want bi-weekly. They want it more frequently than once a month, but they don't want it every week. They don't want it bi-weekly. What's the answer? So the answer at Savvy Cleaner, which is my company, we always said we will put you as a one-off. And a one-off is we will call you whenever there's a cancellation and we will fit your once cleaning, your random cleaning into our schedule, not yours. And then they get really squirrely and they're like, well, what if it's six weeks? But if you don't have a cancellation for six weeks, then we'll call you in six weeks. And then they're like, well, well, I need my house cleaned more than that. Well, how often do you need it? Well, like every couple of weeks. Well, then let's move you to a bi-weekly schedule. All right. Biggest mistake number three, not agreeing with a customer to the outcome of a finished job. This is huge. Okay. So let's say that you get to a customer's house. You have in your mind, your own idea of how things are going to go. And they have in their mind, their idea of how things are going to go. So you start cleaning and you're almost done when the customer pops their head in. And then they say, oh, before you leave, would you mind doing this? Would you mind doing that? And don't forget to do this as well. And they start adding on things to your task because you didn't clarify and they didn't agree to what the finished project looks like. So this is really important on the walkthrough. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the client understands this is the scope of the job. And it's one of the reasons why we use worksheets at Savvy Cleaner, because everything we are agreeing to is on the worksheet. And when they sign that or they initial that at the end of the walkthrough, this is what we're agreeing to. So when we do the walkthrough, if there are any extras, we're going to put that on right now. And we're going to explain that you have to call the office and you have to add in any extra projects that are not on the worksheet. Okay. That's an extra time and it's extra money. All right. Another biggest mistake made by house cleaners is taking on a business partner because you thought they were going to do half the business and they were going to come up with half the money and they were going to do half the work. All right. It very rarely ever ends up that way. Usually the person that starts the business is the one that carries the weight of the business. And they're the ones that are doing the contracts and they're the ones that come up with the money. They're the ones that come up with the good ideas. And there's usually someone riding their coattails. And so it gets really frustrating when you think that you're all in with someone else and they think, Hey, I'm coming along for the ride. And I've seen more house cleaning business partnerships fall apart because just like we have our agreements with our customers, there are no agreements 
up front with the partnerships that say, here's exactly what you're going to bring to the table. Here's exactly what I'm going to bring. Here's exactly how much money we're both going to bring. Here's exactly how much money we're both going to take home. And because those are not clarified from the start, so many businesses just fall apart and they get sour and ugly. And then what normally happens is one or both parties will destroy and sabotage the business so the other person doesn't get everything. And in the end, instead of having a really surviving, thriving business, you have no business at all. So business partnerships, be very, very careful if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And if you do decide to take on a business partner, make sure it's all in writing, that it's all legal, and that the expectations are very clear. All right, number five. One house cleaner said the biggest mistake for me was hiring anyone that showed up for an interview. (laughs) Yes, we've all been there. We were desperate for help. We put an ad in the paper, someone showed up and we hired them, right? But along with hiring, what's happening is you are bringing on an extension of your business. When you just hire somebody that walks in and you don't know what their, their background is and you don't know what their work ethic is and you don't know what their morality system is, is this an honest person? Is this a person that is trustworthy and reliable and dependable? And so one of the things that we learn as house cleaners, and this is kind of a reinventing the wheel thing if you don't really pay attention to hiring and firing procedures, but without very strict hiring and firing procedures, it's easy to like, oh, I really like this person. Oh, this is a single mom. Oh, they need the work. They're going to help me. And you want to believe in the best in people because as house cleaners, we are people pleasers. And so it's instinctive for us to meet people and want to help them. And so we see people that need help and we go, oh yes, I can help you. Well, the reality is if they're not a good fit for your business and they're not going to help you back, it's a bad fit for for employment. So just hiring the first person that comes in, I love you for doing it. I think it's awesome that you're trying to help somebody out and you're trying to give them a chance, but it's a very tight screening process and needs to be because they are representing your brand. They are an extension of your business. And everybody that meets this one employee is going to think that your entire business operates that way. So it is very important that you have a process in place and that you don't just out of desperation hire the first person that walks through the door. All right, number six, taking complaints personally instead of tactically. Oh, this is a really, really tough one. Okay, as house cleaners, this is where it gets interesting. As house cleaners, we want to bring our best to the customer. We want to give it our all. Everything that we do in house cleaning is a touch of our magic. And so it is an extension of us. And then the customer comes in and they're like, oh, it's not very good. And then you get really discouraged, like, oh my goodness, it's not good enough. What did I do wrong? And then you start taking it really personally and you're like, well, I think the customer hates me. Or worse yet, the customer doesn't say anything. Maybe they're just in a bad mood for some reason. And then you start thinking in your head like, oh no, do they not like my work? Are they disillusioned with the fact that I'm here? Did I get sloppy? Did I forget something? What are they not telling me? And house cleaners will second guess themselves. All right. So the good news is this. Stop it. Stop it already because that's what the checklist is for. If you are following a worksheet, you're following a checklist, then every single thing you do is done the exact same way every single time. It's called a system. Once you have a system down, you can stop the guesswork. You can stop worrying and wondering, am I pleasing the customer? Am I doing enough? Am I doing the right job? Is the customer happy? The customer is happy unless they call you back. All right, number seven, giving discounts to attract customers. Ooh, this one really rubs me the wrong way and I hate this for this reason. There are a whole lot of house cleaners that don't feel like they're gonna be able to get any business unless they offer a discount of some sort. And so I see this all the time. Hey, $50 off your first cleaning or your second cleaning or whatever it is. As Savvy Cleaner, we don't do any discounts whatsoever at any time for any reason. We don't have a discounted service. We have an excellent service at a very reasonable price. And it's always very reasonable and it's always excellent. And so it's the value that we're selling, not the discount. I learned this from Costco. Costco has nice vitamins and they are discounted every few months. And I do not buy them except on the months where they are discounted. And I don't know why, because I need them at other times of the year, but because they are discounted, I say to myself, oh, I can save $4 on that one bottle if I wait until it goes on sale. They have trained me to wait for the sale when at any other time I would just go in and I would just buy whatever it is I needed. And so we train our customers either to buy from us on value or to buy from us on price. And if you start your business and start a relationship with a client based on discounts for as long as you clean for them, they're going to always be looking for the next discount. 
Not understanding taxes and employment taxes. Ha ha, this is a tough one. Okay, so about 30% of your business, whatever you earn, needs to be stashed away for taxes. That's just kind of an average. And the reason I say that is because you have a lot of taxes to pay as a business owner. And so if you think that all the money that you earn is yours to keep, you are in for a real treat because that is not the case. And we've all discovered that as professional house cleaners, we all pay our taxes because that is the legal thing to do, right? We are legal, upstanding, ethical business people, and we pay taxes. And so to figure out the taxes is a must from day one, because if it catches up with you and you haven't paid, and I've seen so many house cleaners that fall into this trap, when they get hit by the IRS for thousands of dollars in back pay, plus these really steep fees, it tanks their business and their business goes under. So just start from the very beginning. Say, hey, listen, I'm a business owner and I pay taxes. Make that part of your business plan. And then every dollar that you earn, take out 30% of it and that goes to taxes. You put that in a separate bank account if you need to so that you don't see the money with your eyes. Because if you see the money with your eyes and you think you can spend it, you're very wrong. Because that tax bill comes every quarter or every month or every year, depending on how your business is set up and how you pay. All right, number nine, not tracking business expenses. Okay, this is a really tough one because until you track the expenses, you don't know how much you're spending and you don't know how much to budget for next year, which is crucial to growing your business. And so if you don't track your numbers, you can never grow your business. You can never scale your business. And there are lots of house cleaners that will hire two or three people. And within a couple of months, all of that falls apart because they haven't tracked the spending. And so they don't know what they're spending here and they don't know what they're paying in payroll. And so the money that's coming in, although there's new money coming in every day, this expenses get eaten up very quickly without the budget. And so if you start tracking every item, like just the gloves that you wear, how much does that cost per house, per client, per year? And then you times that by 30 customers. And then if you hire a new employee, that's now this number for the new employee. Okay. And so if you hire two employees, it's that number plus the two employees. So they each have their own sets of gloves that they would use that you would then end up budgeting in for that. It's not like you have a whole bunch of expenses here that stay the same. And then you hire a whole bunch of new people and you grow and you're cleaning a whole bunch more houses and this number stays the same. That does not happen. You use more cleaning supplies, more cleaning chemicals, more, more and different equipment. It might be another car. I mean, the expenses go up. So if you're going to survive in business, you have to track those expenses. Biggest mistake number 10, not asking for ratings and reviews. And so we need to get in the habit right now, every single day on every single job, asking every single customer for ratings and reviews. Now it's like Amazon. If you've ever bought something from Amazon, every time you buy a product, they say, Hey, rate our product. What do you think? It's not like every five products that you buy, they ask for a rating and review. They ask it on every single product. And then if you don't give them a rating and review, a couple of weeks later, you get an email and they're like, Hey, what do you think of this product? And you're like, Whoa, I forgot about that product, but yeah, I, I've really enjoyed it. And now you can write the rating and review because it's feedback that helps us take what we learned today and make it better. And so if somebody said, what you're doing is awful and I hate it, that is great feedback because I can't fix it if I don't know. So get in the habit right now of giving ratings and reviews and asking for ratings and reviews. All right, this one comes from a house cleaner. She says, I didn't get insurance because I thought I would be careful and I would never need it. Well, $26,000 later, after ruining a marble floor, she now has insurance. Ah, man, that one bites. It took her three years to pay it off. All right, did you know that it's illegal to drive a car without insurance? And it should be illegal to clean houses without insurance as well. The reason it's illegal in a car, well, because you can kill people, number one, that's really bad, but it's also property damage if you damage your vehicle or someone else's. A home is so much more expensive than just a car. So it just stands to reason that, of course, the homeowner is going to have their own homeowner insurance. But as a house cleaner, if you're going to go into their property, you need to be insured if you screw up anything. And there are so many things that can screw up. And every day I belong to several Facebook groups, but every day in those cleaning Facebook groups, I watch people show pictures of property that they've damaged. And they're like, I used this chemical and I didn't know that it was going to screw up. And now I got to replace this. And does anyone know a quick way to fix this without me having to buy the customer a whole new granite counter or a whole new stainless steel fridge? <laughs> the property damage I have seen. Okay. So do you need insurance? And the answer is yes. 
Yes, you do need insurance and from day one. Number 12, keeping emotionally abusive customers that you wanted to let go because they had given you referrals, referrals to family and friends. Ah, let's just take a second here and think about this one. All right, so this happens a lot and there is a customer and they might be a high maintenance customer that then recommends you to their mother or their child or their friend or their neighbor or whatever. And all those people are good customers and you end up putting up with a bad customer because you're afraid if I say goodbye to this customer, I'm going to lose all the other customers that they recommended. All right, so this has to be something that happens on the walkthrough from day one. So when you arrive at a customer's house and they say, oh, I have a friend that's looking for, okay, here's how that works. And you very clearly up front have to create the rules and regulations that go along with the referrals. Anytime anyone, anywhere gives me a referral, it has to be based on this. The referral is because you like my work and because you want to refer me. And then whatever happens between me and that person is between me and that person. And even though you recommended me to that person, I will never have a conversation with you about that person out of respect for that person. And I will never have a conversation with that person about you, you and me, because I have respect for you. So just up front, just wanted to let you know that even though this person is your friend and you have a lot of conversations with them, even I may be a common denominator that I clean both of your homes, I will never have a conversation with either one of you about the other one. So please don't bring them up to me again after the referral. All right, number 13, there's a house cleaner that wrote in and she said, I wasted 20 years of cleaning all day, every day when I could have been listening to podcasts or audible books. Yowzer, well, that just breaks my heart because there's a whole lot of stuff you could have been learning during that time. (laughs) Well, the good news is you had time to think through a lot of things. So maybe you resolved life's big issues in your head. I don't know. But cleaning is a perfect time for you to be listening to audible books or podcasts or things like that, things that will help you learn and grow and develop your skills. And so a lot of house cleaning companies allow one earbud in that allows you then to pay attention to everything around you for situational awareness. And also if a customer or a client is speaking to you and it prevents you then from being on the telephone or other things that are distracting while you're working. And so if you can work and you can listen to something running in the background of your mind that brightens your mood, that brightens your education, that makes you a little bit smarter and a little bit better person, I totally, totally recommend it. I have learned so much over the years while I'm in my car or I'm out jogging or I'm cleaning or whatever, because it is time that my brain can be accepting information while my body is doing the physical routine tasks that are part of the system that almost run on autopilot. Yes, I'm aware of being in the moment, but enough so that I can still clean and do a very thorough job and hear the podcast or learn at the same time. So I hate that somebody wasted 20 years. Please don't be that person. Let's learn from this house cleaner's mistake. All right, number 14, biggest mistakes house cleaners make. This one comes from somebody who said, I believed everything that I read in a cleaning Facebook group. (laughs) All right, let me back up just a second because I myself belong to five Facebook cleaning groups. In fact, I run them and so does my team. And so we are in the thicket of Facebook groups every day. And every day, some of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my entire life come out from house cleaners in that group. Now, I don't know if they're trying to spook you or if they're trying to trick you or if they're trying to, uh, you're my competition and I know that you live nearby. So I'm going to give you some bad advice so that you can ruin somebody's countertop or whatever. Some of the worst advice I've ever seen is inside the groups that I belong to. Now, the reason I say that is because Facebook groups are a public forum and people are allowed to come in and we we welcome people's opinions. So please, if you're going to go to a public forum like Facebook or it could be Reddit or whatever, okay, buyer beware. All right, number 15, biggest mistakes house cleaners make. And this is a real bugaboo, giving away too much for free. Every house cleaner at some point has done this. So don't beat yourself up over this, but this is a lesson learned and I'm hoping that you learn it too, so you don't make the same mistake. But giving away too much for free, because we are people pleasers, we want to help people, and then we see somebody that really needs our help, and they either can't afford it, or they can only afford part of it, so we say, well, I'll just throw in an extra hour of cleaning. Well, I'll just take them to the doctor's appointment. I will just run their grocery errands for them. I will just babysit their kids. I will just walk their dogs. The stories are endless, right? You end up giving away two, three, four hours extra that is not on the pay book. The reason this is a problem is because every time that happens, what you're doing is you're stepping a little bit closer into this complacency complaining situation. 
where you have broken down the barriers of a business relationship and you are stepping into that vein of now I'm your family. And so when you cross that barrier, what happens now is they treat you like the family instead of treating you like the professional that you are and it's not scalable. So if you have a team of people and the person that's given the extra goes away, now they don't want anyone else. They only want that house cleaner. And so what happens is if that house cleaner is not available and you send in another person, they're going to complain about the new person because the new person didn't do all the extras, even though the new person is doing everything on the checklist and everything exactly as your standard operating procedures declare that they do. Okay. They're doing everything by the book. The other person went rogue. Now they want the other person that went rogue. And this is where customers uh, buy from just the employee, like they kick you out and they only want this person to come clean their house. It's because this person gave them so many extras for free, but it's not scalable and it's not sustainable. And in the end, this is what they don't tell you. The people pleasing in the end will cause regret to the house cleaner because then they feel like, oh, this person now expects me to pick up their groceries and to walk their dog and to take them to the doctor's appointment and all these other things that were at once volunteered. They now expect it at no extra charge. Number 16, advertising with no game plan and no repetition. Like, well, wait a second. What is that? That's not advertising. That's like a flash in the pan, right? (laughs) Think about Coca-Cola for a second. When is the last time you saw a Coke ad? Or when is the last time you saw Coca-Cola inside a movie where they were doing product placement? The answer is probably, well, you can probably think about some sometime in the last, I don't know, day where you saw an ad. Coca-Cola is over a hundred years old and yet they're advertising over and over and over and over again and they're still top of mind. And you go into a restaurant and they say, what kind of drink do you want? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's Coke or Pepsi. Why? (gasps) Wait a second. Pepsi also advertises after all these years in business, right? So if you are a business, you're going to end up advertising over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And if you're not advertising, you're marketing. And so as a business owner, you too get to do things over and over and over. But if you only advertise once, nobody really caught your name. Did you know that the average of advertising is seven impressions before people even remember your name? And so if you're working in a neighborhood, keep running those flyers in that neighborhood. Because over and over and over until one day the neighbor's talking to their friend, right? They're going to say, Hey, who do you know who cleans houses? And they're going to say your name. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get their flyers. All right. Moving on. Number 17, hiring friends and family. All right. I, I too have made the mistake of hiring friends and family. And both of them, both of the experiences on different occasions backfired on me. And it's because it's really hard to fire somebody that is lazy that is related to you. Or it is really hard to fire somebody that was your best friend that you confided in and now they know all your secrets and now they know how to use it against you in your business. I know. So one of the things that I really recommend is this. Be friendly to your employees, but do not be their friends. And I I don't say this to be ugly, like don't be their friends. What I'm saying is don't, don't break down those barriers. When you bring people into your business, bring people in and keep it at a very professional level. Because that way they show up on time. They don't call out sick. They do the job they were paid to do. If there needs to be a callback, they do the callback. When you're friends, what happens is they do a sloppy work. They show up late. They have call outs. And they're like, oh, I know you're good for it. You'll cover me. Can you run over and do the callback? Because I missed something. But um, I know you got my back, right? So our friends treat us differently and our family treats us differently than our employees. And so I want you to keep it very specific because if you're running a business, you're running a business and you can't run a business based on lousy or wobbly friendships and wobbly family relationships. Moving on. Number 18, giving an estimate without a walkthrough. (laughs) Okay. There are two schools of thought. Number one is don't ever do it because you're a fool. The other school of thought is if I can disqualify you on the phone, I I know exactly where you are and I know about what price I'm going to give you and I know about what's going to happen by the time I get there. So the first one is for beginner house cleaners. And the second one is for advanced house cleaners. Because after you're an advanced house cleaner and you've been in the business for a while, you know all the nuances. You've heard all the stories. You've seen all the stuff. And so you start asking questions. What about this? What about that? Tell me about this. Tell me about that. And they start disqualifying or qualifying themselves on the phone. And you have a really good idea about what you're going to get into. So you can always say, hey, listen, instead of me giving you a price, I can give you a range. 
but I, I'm going to be in your neighborhood this afternoon at 4 p.m. I would love to swing by and just take a look at your house, make sure we're playing on the same page. And if I can save you any money, I'd love to do that. Would that be fair? And then they go, yeah, that would be fair. Come on over. I did not invest enough in myself and my education with either coaches, consultants, or training to grow my business. Now, 13 years into my business, I'm still repeating the same errors over and over again, and I'm stuck struggling trying to make ends meet every month. Mm. All right, I hate that, and I hate that for so many reasons. There are a lot of house cleaners that because they started the business on their own, they think they can go to the next level on their own, okay? But there are steps in our lives all along the way that require new teachers, new mentors, new coaches, new education. You don't be born and you're an infant and then suddenly like, wow, you're an adult, right? You have to go through school all along the way. There are different steps and different stages and different things that you learn. And as you go through those stages, new teachers come into your life, new coaches, new mentors. You have new skills. Once you have new skills that you're applying, now you have new teachers and new mentors and new skills, right? And so it's a, it's progress. You can't start and stay in one space. And think, oh, I got it all figured out because I started a business. I'm a business owner. Yeah, you're a business owner, but guess what? You're repeating the same small window over and over and over and over again. And if you were a tiny child and you only ever repeated that same window, you would still be a child. You would be a great big adult in a great big adult body with childish behaviors. And you'd have childish sensibilities. And then you wouldn't be able to go out in the real world and function because you wouldn't know how, right? but the day will come in order to grow your business. You got to put on your big girl or your big boy pants. You got to pull out your wallet and you have to invest in something. I don't care if it's books. I don't care if it's audible books. I don't care if it's consultants. I don't care if it's coaches. I don't care if it's training programs. I really don't care what it is. What I care about is that you go through the steps of progress because right now, when you are a business owner, there's a whole lot to take in and nobody expects you to learn it in a day. But if you are 13 years in your business, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but if you are 13 years in your business and you are still struggling to pay your bills, you have a lot more problems than just being stuck in year one. And so my my suggestion is please stop whatever it is you're doing and take a step back and figure out what the lost and missed opportunity costs are. How much money could you be earning if you'd paid for the education, if you'd paid for the coach, or if you'd paid for the training? Because once you learn what those opportunity missed costs are, you might be losing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that a thousand dollars of training could have prevented. 